When you finish this video, you're going to Google two words. In 1959, nine very experienced Russian hikers set off on a 16-day expedition into the mountains. Seven days in and some bad weather forced them to make camp about halfway up a mountain. The last pictures of them alive were taken at this campsite. When the hikers never showed up, they sent out a search party who quickly found their campsite and it was immediately apparent that something horrible had happened to them. All their tents had been slashed open but from the inside, and inside the tents was all their gear, neatly folded and stacked inside the remains of the tents. No bodies, but nine sets of footprints walking away from the camp. Using the footprints, they discovered five hikers who were only dressed in underwear who had died of hypothermia. They found the other four hikers 250 feet away in a riverbed, wearing the clothes of their dead hiker friends. They had skull fractures, chest fractures, eyes, tongue, lips missing, and their bodies were radioactive. Official cause of death? Unknown compelling force. This is why you should always trust your parents. In 1990, a father and his 15-year-old son worked together at a gas station in Florida. One night, the boy was sitting outside on a break when he saw a crazy-looking woman walking towards the store. They were in a high-crime area, and it was very late, so the boy turns around to look through the glass at his dad to see what he should do. His dad took one look at the woman and just shook his head, no, do not help her. The woman walks up to the boy and says, hey, my car's broken down, can you give me a ride? Before the boy can answer, his dad bursts outside and says, you need to leave here immediately. Angrily, the woman turns and leaves, cussing them both out the whole way. One year later, the boy's in his room at home when his dad calls from the other room and says, you gotta come in here and look at the TV. On the screen was the same woman from the gas station. Better known as Eileen Warnos, she was a serial killer who used to pick up her male victims at gas stations in Florida. She was later put to death. This is why you should never stay in sketchy motels. In 2005, a young woman on a solo road trip across the country decided to stop for the night. The first place she sees is the Mountaintop Motel. It looked pretty cheap, but she was tired, so she said, good enough. The check-in guy eyed her up and down very uncomfortably and then asked her if she was traveling alone. She ignores the question, pays for her room, and then walks away with the key. When she gets inside her room and sees there are literally cockroaches in her bed, she says nope and decides to sleep in her car in the parking lot. Around 3 a.m., she wakes up to see the check-in guy using his own keys to get into the motel room she was supposed to be in. A few minutes later, he storms out and slams the door and starts walking towards her car. Terrified, she hides under her blanket as the man tries to open her car doors but can't and walks away. She speeds off and calls her friend and asks her to look up the address of Mountaintop Motel so she can give it to police. Her friend's quiet for a second and then just says, the Mountaintop Motel closed a week ago. This is why you should never open your door for strangers. In 2013, a woman let her dog out to use the bathroom one more time before bed. After only a few minutes, she starts hearing scratching on her door, which is typically the sound her dog makes when he's ready to come in. But it just seemed way too soon for him to be done being outside. So she decides to look through the peephole to make sure it really is her dog. But what she sees is terrifying. A deranged looking man is right outside her door, staring intently at her door handle, waiting for it to turn open. As she's looking in horror, unable to do anything, he starts scratching at the door as hard as he can, never leaving his gaze from the door handle. She manages to stifle a scream, she backs away and realizes her dog is still outside. So she goes to the side window, but there's no sign of her dog, and so she goes back to the door to see if maybe the man's moved. He hasn't moved. His this is why you should always sleep with your lights on. In 1991, a man named Christopher Case was found dead in his bathtub, fully clothed in the fetal position. When police interviewed his best friend, Sammy, she told them about a very disturbing phone call she got from him the night before he died. On the call, he told her that the previous night, he had woken up to what sounded like whispering coming from underneath his bed. When he went to look, he couldn't move. As he laid helplessly, he watched a black figure pull itself out from underneath his bed. Once it was fully upright, it reached down and began choking him until he passed out. The next morning when he came to, he felt his neck and it was swollen and bruised. And then he saw blood on his hands and he saw that there were deep, uniform incisions on each of his fingertips. As he's saying all this to Sammy and telling her how scared he is to go to bed that night, he suddenly stops and he says, I hear whispering outside my room. Then the phone went dead. This is why you should always be scared of clowns. In 2004, a babysitter had just sat down to watch TV before the parents got back when she noticed something. In the corner of the room was a large clown statue that no matter how she positioned herself, seemed like it was staring right at her. As she's looking at it, the father calls to check in on the kids. She tells him everything is fine, and right before they're about to hang up, she says, 
Why do you have a huge clown statue in your TV room? There was silence on the phone, and then the father just says, We don't own a clown statue. She immediately drops the phone, runs upstairs, gets the kids, runs outside, calls the cops. Cops go in and come out with this guy. As the police are taking the clown away, one of the officers comes over to the girl and with a very grim look on his face just says, we found him underneath one of the kids' beds. He was holding a sharpened screwdriver. If you scare easily, I wouldn't watch this video. In 2013, a mine explorer found this entrance to an abandoned mine and decided to go have a look around. He decides to film his experience and upload it to his YouTube channel where he had uploaded hundreds of other videos of him exploring mines, but he never once references the paranormal or ghosts or anything like that until this video. As soon as he steps foot inside, he tells the camera that he has a really uneasy feeling about being there and wonders if he should even keep going, but he does. Everything seems pretty normal until he gets to a section in the mine where there's a bunch of chains hanging down from the ceiling. He hears something in the back of the tunnel, so he pulls his flashlight out and he shines it towards the back and he sees a chain swinging and it shouldn't be because there's no draft and he's all alone and you can tell he's scared by the way he starts talking. Although he's totally freaked out, he wants to know what's causing the chain to swing, so he goes farther and farther into the mine until he hears something. People whispering in every direction. He gets totally spooked and runs out. If you don't want to sleep tonight, watch the whole video. This is why you should never talk to strangers. In the early 2000s, a young girl was waiting outside her friend's house, peeling the bark off of a tree, when a strange man approaches her. As he got closer, she could see that he was grinning ear to ear and his face was white as a ghost. He walks right up to her and pinches her on the arm and says, how would you like it if I peeled your skin off? Just then, her friend's mom yells for her to come inside and the man walks away. It would be years before the girl's mother would finally tell her who this man really was. Her friend's mom had seen the man pinch her on the arm and had immediately called the police, who quickly rounded this guy up. Plastered all across the inside of his van were dozens of pictures of this girl, but what they found in his storage locker is straight out of a nightmare. In the locker was a chair with hand and arm restraints, next to it was an anatomy book and hundreds of torture tools. This is why you should always lock your crawl space. In 2019, a young woman had just moved into the second floor of an apartment building. She noticed a tiny crawl space that connected all the apartments on the floor, but she wrote it off, citing, who'd be small enough to crawl through that? One night, she walks into her living room and out on the fire escape is a tiny woman desperately trying to yank open her locked windows. Terrified, she hides behind some furniture until the woman eventually leaves, at which point she runs into a room, grabs her phone, and calls the police. While waiting for the cops to arrive, she hears something above her and she looks up. One of the ceiling tiles had popped up and the woman from the fire escape is staring down at her. She'd used the crawl space to get up there. The girl screams and the woman scurries away. It took three days for the police to finally get the woman out of the crawl space and bring her into custody. Turns out she was on some unknown, extremely hard drug and had totally lost her mind. You're about to hear one of the most disturbing true stories on the internet. In 1921, a German farmer woke up to find a deep set of footprints leading from the forest right up to his back door. Whoever had come to his house had not left yet. After making sure it wasn't just his family, he searched everywhere on his property and his house everywhere, and he could not determine who made the prints or where they went. A few weeks later, his maid abruptly quits, saying that every time she's alone in the house, she hears demonic voices in the attic. Shortly thereafter, he and his family start to hear the voices too. When no one's heard from them in a couple days, the neighbors go over to check and they find them in the barn. One by one, each of the family members made their way down to the barn where they were systematically murdered and stacked in the corner. To this day, no one knows who or what is responsible for this crime. 